Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another Queen Studios statue unboxing and review video. Now today we are going to be taking a look at none other than the quarter scale Spidey based off his appearance in Captain America Civil War. Now I got mine from ToysWonderland.com, link for that is in the description below. They have 12 month installment plans and a points based reward system. Now I personally am not the biggest fan of quarter scale statues. I more prefer quarter scale figures and if I'm going for a statue, I'm going all out. I'm going third scale or above. But this particular piece caught my eye because of the pose that Spidey's in. We will be discussing that a lot more though in just a second. Now this technically is his outfit from Civil War and yes he is holding Cap's shield. But if you wanted to you could very easily use this guy as your quarter scale Spidey in the collection. We will be doing a comparison next to the Hot Toys figure throughout the course of the video because I am curious to see how he stacks up size wise. Because this guy is as crunched down as he is, it does mean that height wise he sits a little bit lower. That could work for you, say for instance if you are working with a more confined shelf. This could slot in where the Hot Toys figure might just be a little bit tall to do so. Now of course we will find out more a little bit later on. But for me the real reason I picked this guy up was because of the scene that he's based off. This is of course based off the airport scene in Civil War. Being the first time we ever saw Spidey in the MCU, that's kind of why I gravitated towards this statue. Now the base itself was initially planned on being the truck that he lands on top of so it would have been properly screen accurate, but for some reason they had to change it supposedly for licensing. Now you do have this airport style caution strip along the bottom and then a ton of rubble on top of that. Which yes, isn't super accurate to the scene, but it does represent the airport battle. There's an engine in there, there's a piece of a truck or a generator, and yes you do have a cone that is magnetically attached. Now the base itself, in my opinion, looks great. It does make you kind of suspend disbelief as to how this big platform would still be structurally sound for Spidey to land on top of, but the rock texture and details are on point. There are a ton of washes and a ton of dry brushing on the surface. It looks very realistic. And the magnetic cone also attaches with a satisfying thunk. You also have a couple of pieces of rebar sticking out. And don't worry, most of the pieces that do stick out are a nice soft material, so they shouldn't crack or snap if you do happen to apply just a little bit too much pressure on the base when you are lifting it up. It's also worth noting that it is extremely heavy. I wouldn't be surprised if it is in fact polystone. On top, it's a rather flat surface with this kind of white flag towards the back. You also have a velvet section very cleverly placed where Spidey's knee is going to sit. That means it will be fully protected when you install him on the base. Speaking of putting Spidey on the base, everything pegs in very securely. Strong magnets, nice sturdy keys, and yes, some very nice hidden seams. More on that though a little bit later on. As for the suit, there is a little bit of a difference between the Hot Toys one and this one in terms of how vibrant everything is. It's a little bit more muted with the Queen Studio statue. I don't mind the way that looks, but if you want something that's super punchy and vibrant that's going to stand out in your display, this one might not be it for you. Just before we move on, I did want to discuss the masked and unmasked head sculpts that come with the deluxe version. Now, if you don't care for a Tom Holland sculpt, you can opt for the regular. Me though, I wanted to see what Queen Studios could do with Tom Holland's likeness. And I'm pleased to report that I'm not disappointed, I love the way this looks. Now in comparison to the Hot Toy sculpt which I thought was very strong, I give the win to Queen Studios. Now it is down to personal preference, 
do let me know which you prefer down in the comments below. But I think the expression and the complexion does look slightly more realistic on the left here with Queen Studios. I love the sculpt of the hair and they've actually sculpted in the pores on the skin. Versus Hot Toys who went with a simple paint application approach where the sculpt itself is very smooth. The texture is just paint. You can also see that, yeah, his neck is visible. This isn't something that we're used to seeing with swap out Tom Holland sculpts, but I love the way that looks. They've also very cleverly used one of the web lines, which by the way is painted in brown because black would be way too stark, and that means it is a very seamless connection. Now the headstands themselves are pretty straightforward. They are black, they're a rather angular design, and you can see Queen Studios on the back. You do have some dry brushing on the surface and there is a Queen Studios logo down below. I'm pleased to report that these headstands are actually made of metal, which was a surprise but a welcome one. Now you do have two different options for the Spidey sculpt, either eyes wide open or eyes squinted. Unfortunately though, they haven't put any detail in the white parts of the lenses. They are literally just painted in sharp, stark white. Now, I would have loved to have seen an actual translucent cover over the top just like Hot Toys do, but this, I guess from a distance, does work. It's just not quite as detailed as the quarter scale Hot Toys eyes. You do of course have the exact same connection for this head sculpt onto the bust headstand. Now it is going to be up to you which way you decide to display your Spidey in your collection. Here we have Spidey himself though, up close and personal. And I do want to dissect the outfit, starting off with his shoes. They do look accurate to me. Now yes, you do have a fully sculpted and painted sole on the left side because it very clearly is visible and it looks great. There is also a ton of texture on the suit, both in the red sections and in the blue sections which in and of itself might not be all that accurate. The red sections, don't get me wrong, had a ton of raised dotted basketball texture on them, but the blue sections were a little bit more smooth and the patterns seemed to be simply printed on the surface. Now the web shooter here is slightly inaccurate. They got the design just a little wrong with this additional panel that kind of sits underneath but for the most part, everything else looks very good. The musculature, the shading, and the web lines. They are actually sculpted into the surface. They're a proper 3D thing. They're not just black lines drawn over the top of the suit. Because the suit isn't fabric, it's all fully sculpted polystone, they had to go a little bit more extreme with the texturing and the sculpt work. That means when the lighting is just right and the shadows hit it, those lines do actually pop very nicely. Now on his back he of course has the big red spidey symbol and it looks great. I never noticed all the subtle tech details that go around the edges, but yeah, I'm really happy with how that looks. He also does have a very interesting line that extends around from the back of his belt all the way up under through his legs to the front. Now that line isn't supposed to be there. He has no separation for the cheeks, let's just say. In the end, the final suit that was seen in Civil War, that line wasn't there. That could be based on some early CGI, but for me, I would have rather if Queen Studios delayed this just a little to remove that line, because at the end of the day, just like the web shooters, it isn't 100% screen accurate. One thing that I think is though, is Cap's shield. It looks awesome. I have no complaints at all with how the shield turned out. I'm pretty sure it's made of real metal. It's very heavy, it's cold to the touch, and the finish is on point. It's got this soft satin finish over the top, the red looks vibrant, the blue looks muted, 
and the panel lines are actually panel lined. So yes, the shield gets a tick from me. Now moving on to the head sculpts. I know we've already discussed them earlier, but it's worth checking out how they fit on the body and talking about which one I prefer. Now the accurate one to go with would be the squinted eyes, and I think it looks great. The size, the shape, Again, we've already spoken at length about that. I also love how seamless it connects up and how strong the magnet is. This one, though, is the one I've been going with in the display, the Tom Holland head sculpt. I absolutely love the way it looks on the body. It is slightly smaller than Hot Toys, as we saw, but I have no complaints with the size. This, I feel, is a more accurate, true-to-form quarter-scale Tom Holland. He's a little bit smaller, especially compared to the Hot Toys Iron Man figures, which tend to be a little bit on the larger side. Yes, even in quarter-scale. Now, it's going to be down to personal preference which one you decide to go with. Heck, if you don't even care care about the Tom Holland head sculpt, you can just go for the standard one and you won't be missing out at all. Because at the end of the day, he was never seen in this pose with Cap's shield without his mask on. It's more of a concept style piece, but for me, it works. I absolutely love the head sculpt, I think the likeness is on point, and that means I can have the mask on the Hot Toys figure and I can do whatever I want with the posing there. I'm not going to lie though, every now and then I wouldn't be surprised if I switch out that head sculpt seeing as it is super easy. It's magnetic, you pop one on, you pop the one that you just took off on a headstand and away you go. Now for a quick side by side comparison, here we have the Hot Toys quarter scale Spidey on the right and the Queen Studios one on the left. The height for the Hot Toys figure will vary drastically depending on your base config. I've gone for one that sits slightly lower just because I don't have unlimited height in my display. This works for me. You can see he still though is taller than the Queen Studios figure. His head is also a lot larger, in fact, the entire body for Spidey is larger with Hot Toys. Which one is the true quarter scale? I think it's Queen being slightly smaller, but then again, it's all down to personal preference at the end of the day. You can also see that the Queen suit is just a little bit more desaturated compared to the Hot Toys one. The super vibrant red and the vibrant blue of the Hot Toys figure is stark. Yes, pun intended. You'll also notice that that line that extends around the front of the Queen Studio Spidey's crotch area is noticeably absent from the Hot Toys one. That is more accurate. The web shooters are more accurate with Hot Toys as well, but don't forget the Hot Toy Spidey came out far later than the Queen Studios statue. At the end of the day, if I did have to pick between these two, I would probably lean towards the figure. I love the customizability, you can change up the pose, the accessories, and yes, even the display base. They are both great options, but the figure is just a little bit more versatile. Just wrapping up on the Queen Studios quarter scale Spidey based off Captain America Civil War. Now, the entire reason I bought this statue was because of the scene that this specific pose is based off. Which is, of course, the first time we ever saw Tom Holland as Spidey in the MCU. It's an unforgettable scene from a fantastic movie, and that's, again, why I decided to pick this up, knowing full well that I was probably going to prefer the figure, but I wanted to give this guy a chance, and I'm really glad I did. I love the way this guy turned out. Now, that being said, he isn't perfect. There are a couple of inaccuracies on the suit, namely the web shooters and that weird line that extends all the way around. It's kind of like a seam between the two sides of his pants where it's really supposed to be seamless. There is not supposed to be a line there. Now I know you're probably sick of hearing me going on about the line, so that's the last time I'll mention it. Everything else is great. The texture, the web lines, the paint applications, including the shading on the musculature, plus the die cast shield. And then for me, the icing on the cake is the Tom Holland sculpt. This might just be one of the best Tom Holland sculpts I have ever seen. And because of how it's been engineered, you have a visible neck, which isn't something we get to see very often. But it is accurate to when Peter Parker takes off his mask. His neck is very clearly visible in the movie. Now at the end of the day, 
being a figure collector, as I said earlier, I would still lean towards the figure, but this is a very strong contender as well. If you only have space for one quarter scale Spidey, sit down and have a long hard think because both options will serve you very well. Now I got mine from ToysWantLand.com. Link for that is in the description below. They have 12 month installment plans and a points based reward system. I also have to say a massive thank you to my buddy Slam Collections on Insta for coming over and helping me film this piece. I have left the link to his page in the description below. Go ahead and check that out. He takes some amazing high res vids and some kick-ass photos as well. While you are down there, check out the link to Six Scale Network, the Facebook group. Come along, chat figures, share photos of your collection, and of course, see what's coming up next on the channel. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.